Good morning. I'm taking a pole dancing class tonight, and it's taking all the strength in me to not cancel it right now. <laughs> I'm not going to. But I kind of want to. I'm very scared. But I'm not going to. Oh, my God. So I used to be a dancer. I grew up loving to entertain. I was always performing, whether it was doing theater or dance or cheerleading. I grew up wanting to be the center of attention. And now I am the center of attention for a living. So <laughs> I taught all of the hip hop classes at my local dance studio. And I also choreographed for a competition team that I was also a part of. I grew up loving dance. Dance was a major part of my life growing up and it was really my main form of movement as a kid. On top of the fact that it was my main form of movement growing up, it was also like the first way that I ever really connected with my body. Dance was like my first uh, tool that I used to strengthen my connection with myself and to go deeper into my own sensuality. In those early stages of me on my body image journey, learning to love and accept my body and celebrate it exactly as it was, dance was like a major tool in that. And you know, you get older, you go to college, you become an adult, and then there's, there's less opportunities for dance as an adult. There's not as many places that you can easily go to to dance the same way you can when you're a kid. I wish there was. I wish that I could sign up for like a six month dance class that meets every Wednesday for an hour. That would be so fun to me. But it's just harder to find opportunities to incorporate dance into your life as you get older. And so I sort of fell out of touch with dance and how important it once was to me. And it's something that I still think about all the time. I always wish that I could bring dance back into my life, but I just haven't found an outlet for that yet. But before I get into today's video, it's time to introduce the sponsor, which is our friends over at Dipsy. If you don't know, Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. If you have not gotten into audio erotica yet, I am telling you, for all my horny bitches out there, there's nothing like it. If you're looking for some suggestions on the Dipsy app, there was one that I listened to recently, two that I listened to recently that I really enjoyed, Colin, All to Himself, and All Nighter. I have the Dipsy app on my phone, put on my headphones, listen to some really hot voice tell me all the things they want to do to me. I'm going to start sweating just talking about it. No matter what you're into or what turns you on, there's definitely going to be something for you on Dipsy. There are so many stories on there and they're constantly adding new content. So there's always going to be something new for you to explore no matter what it is that you're into. I'm constantly in the search section, just tapping, yep, all like rough and wild and dominant. <laughs> How about in public too? Ooh. And no matter what tag you pick, there are so many stories for you to listen to. You'll just simply never run out. That's just the in public section. And I'm not even close to the bottom. There's so many fucking stories on here. And as always, for viewers of my channel, Dipsy is offering an extended 30 day free trial for everyone that goes to dipsystories.com slash party like Maddie. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash party like Maddie, D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash Party like Maddie, and thank you again to Dipsy for sponsoring today's video. I was talking in one of my recent vlogs about a conversation that I had with my nutritionist. So if you wanna hear more about this in depth, definitely go watch the video where I already talked about this. I'll link it in the description down below. But I was talking about how movement became a lot more difficult for me when I stopped having dance as the outlet. Movement as it is connected to performance and entertainment always felt so much more enjoyable and I didn't get as self-conscious about it and I, I just didn't worry about it as much as I did other forms of movement. My experience with other forms of movement growing up was really them being used as punishment. I never found enjoyment in movement that wasn't entertainment. And I almost feel like dance and cheerleading stayed sacred and they, they stayed as forms of movement that never got attached to these shameful 
uh, feelings, feeling like it was punishment. Dance and cheerleading never got put into those categories of movement because growing up, people always said that dance and cheerleading weren't sports, that they weren't that hard, that they didn't really count. Um, and people just wrote dance and cheerleading off as like lesser than forms of movement which sucked so wrong and like so annoying. But looking back on it now, I kind of think that's how they stayed safe to me because nobody was ever gonna use dance or cheerleading as a way to punish me for being a chubby kid because nobody saw those as real forms of exercise. Which is an interesting reflection that I'm having right now as I'm filming. <laughs> and so anyways, I've been seeing a nutritionist for like, seven or eight months now. I'll link her Instagram down below. Definitely go check her out. Her Instagram name is Weight Neutral Nutritionist. And she's been like so helpful in helping me reformat uh, my relationships with food and movement and just uh, form a healthier relationship with these sorts of things mentally. It starts off like, okay, part of healing my relationship with movement is going to be finding a form of movement that I like so that movement never has to feel like punishment. Finding a form of movement that I feel excited to do. And so I sit and I think and I'm like, hmm, what is a form of movement that I like doing? What is a form of movement that makes me feel excited? And the answer is dance. And so I know that I need to find a way to incorporate entertainment and dance into the forms of movement that I do regularly, but I just don't know where to begin. This is a long intro to today's video, is it? <laughs> Hence the name of today's video. I'm gonna try pole dancing. I'm excited to explore what this new sort of relationship with movement can look like as an adult. I'm really excited to rediscover uh, a, a way that movement can be fun and not intimidating for me. I just really want to find a form of movement that feels like joy to me. I want to figure out what I love doing, what my body loves doing, and do more of it. So anyways, my nutritionist showed me this place called Incredipole, which is in Brooklyn, and I'm gonna take an intro to pole dancing class tonight. Just try it out, see if I like it. <laughs> first, let's look some things up. Like what, what do I need to know before getting into pole dancing for the first time? I don't know what, uh, things to know before pole dancing. Well, well, fuck it, let's find out. All right, everything you need to know before your first pole dance class. Picture me right here, baby. <laughs> Seems like a helpful article. Step one, what should I wear? It says, for my first class, I wore knee length shorts and a tank top. I do know that I was told in the email that I received not to apply any lotion to my body today. So when I got out of the shower this morning, we just started raw dog in life. Unless you're specifically going to a heels class, don't worry about footwear as you'll be dancing barefoot, which is good to know because I was thinking to myself, I don't have any fucking sneakers. I The running sneakers that I have are from like 2014, so they're not, they're not so great. What to bring? The essentials are a bottle of water and a badass attitude, which <laughs> I can do that. During the class, you won't be graceful and that's okay. Don't expect on your first lesson that you'll nail everything straight away and you'll be completely elegant and graceful. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna be elegant or graceful or anything close to that, so good. I'm kind of hoping that because this is an intro class, we're mainly just gonna be like dancing around the pole and not trying to lift ourselves up because I don't trust that I have a single ounce of upper body strength right now, to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes in my brain, I think that I still have the strength that I did when I was a cheerleader. Like I was strong back then, all right? I was a base. I was one of those bitches on the bottom. I was throwing people up in the air and shit. It gave me the most anxiety, <laughs> but I did do it. And sometimes in my head, I'm like, oh, Maddie, what are you talking about? You're so strong. Remember you used to do all that? And it's like, that was, 10 years ago, which is crazy. I'm old. Like the fact that I'm even able to say, oh, I did something 10 years ago and it's like an actual human activity and not like, I don't know, doing hopscotch. Like it's weird to be like, oh, I haven't done that in 10 years and it's like a, a grown person activity. Anyways. So I feel like I have a great attitude going into this. We've got the right amount of nerves and excitement, but I really do believe in my abilities here. I think, I think it's gonna be good. But I don't know though. <laughs> 
I posted on Instagram today that I was doing this. I was taking a pole dancing class for the first time and somebody DM'd me a really wonderful piece of advice that I wanted to share. They said, celebrate everyone else's success in class without comparing it to your own. Celebrate what you can do. Be okay with not being able to do things and use it as a way to connect with your body instead of as a way to try and look good for people watching. My favorite videos of me dancing are the ones where I completely ignore the camera, don't look at anyone else in the room and just take my time with it. I think that probably rings true. Like it's gonna be the most fun if you dance like nobody's watching. I need a fucking sign like I'm in a 40 year old woman's bathroom dance like no one's watching. But like there's some truth there, you know? But I think if you're hyper aware of the fact that people are watching you or that people are going to judge what you look like, uh, you'll you'll read too far into it and won't enjoy it as much. Uh, comparison is a thief of joy. And all those other things that they say, it's true. <laughs> and that's something that I definitely want to remember because it's not about being good at all. It's just about showing up and doing the movement and having fun. Having fun, isn't that what this is all about? I think it just makes sense for me to do pole dancing though. I, I'm in the bathroom because I need to be putting my hair up. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's get moving. Maybe I'm about to find my next passion and I don't even know it yet. Next year I'll have a pole installed in my living room. We cannot predict these things. This might be what's happening. I think it's time to go to this goddamn pole dancing class. just walked in the front door and I need to record my thoughts right now because if I sit down, it's game over. <laughs> so we did it. I did a pole dancing class, which was so far out of my comfort zone, but I'm really glad that I did it. Here are my thoughts. Here's the thing about me. I have some flexibility. I can touch my toes. I can sit and stretch out my body for hours. I have fucking no core strength. I also don't have a ton of upper body strength, but I think my upper body strength is better than my core strength. I think I underestimated my upper body strength and I overestimated my core strength. I have no fucking core strength. And that makes sense, right? I'm very out of commission in this realm of my life, so. It's gonna take me a while to warm my body back up to all of it. She started off teaching us like a walk, then we did a pivot, then we did a turn or like a spin around the pole. Sorry, I don't know the pole dancing terminology yet. We did like a spin around the pole and then we did like a spin behind the pole, like pushing off the pole to do another spin. Obviously I'm not good at any of them. I've never done this. <laughs> It seemed like I was probably the only person there whose first class it was. Obviously it was an intro class, but it seemed like everyone there had been doing intro for a couple times, which is what they recommend. They say, you know, stay in the intro class until you nail all of these little tricks and then you can go to the beginner level. But it seemed like I was the only one who it was like my first time pole dancing class and you could tell. Now, I tried to not compare myself to others and I wasn't really concerned about being good, uh, but I did have to remind myself several times of like, it's okay to suck. It's okay to be like the worst ever. Um, but there is always a part of my brain that's gonna be like, oh God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> People can see that you suck at this. <laughs> And I do think that for what it's worth, I did a pretty good job of shutting that voice down and just being like, it's fine. 
I feel like a lot of us put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be good at things the first time that we do them, especially when we're doing them in front of an audience. I am for sure someone who kind of prefers to learn on my own, to learn in private and not join groups of people until I feel like I'm sort of established so that I avoid that period where it's a little embarrassing because you suck and it feels like uncomfortable to have other people watch you suck. So there was definitely a part of my brain that was like, this is very out of my comfort zone. I am bad and I am having to be bad in front of other people. And it, it definitely is gonna take some time for me to unlearn and detach this idea of like good and bad as it pertains to movement. I've had to unlearn good and bad when it comes to food and I guess I didn't realize that the same thing applies to experiencing movement. And as I'm going deeper into this and you know, trying to find movement that just sparks joy for me and have fun, having a little bit of recess, as I'm doing this, I need to separate the idea of good and bad. It's not about being good at anything. It's just about moving your body and having fun doing it. That's it. It's not about being good or bad. Um, and it's definitely not about comparing yourself to the people next to you or worrying what they think of you. But yeah, I guess this was like a moment for me to realize that I am perhaps more judgmental towards myself than I thought I was or that I thought I would be. But I also think that's very natural and very normal, especially because I feel like movement is often a very competitive thing. And I have done a lot of competitive movement in the past and I don't think that works for me. I just wanna have fun. I'm not here to compete with anyone. I'm not even here to compete with myself, okay? I just wanna be bad and have fun being bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna be my thing. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's hard to tell after one, one go at it. But we'll see, I'll probably go to class every now and again. I still wanna try a burlesque class and then obviously I want to get back into doing hip hop. I do think that I'll probably enjoy those two things more than pole dancing, but I, who knows? Maybe I'll surprise myself. I'm just trying to be easy on myself and remember that it's like okay to not be great at this. It's okay to not have a ton of core strength and to need to work your body up to doing more. I, I don't, I never want to make myself uh, like upset doing this type of shit. This should be fun. If it stops being fun, then I will stop doing it, you know? So in order to keep this fun, I need to stay nice to myself. And that includes not beating myself up for sucking at everything because I'm going to. And the point of me wanting to try different forms of movement and get back into it and find something that I love the same way I loved to dance when I was younger, it's not about being good at it at all. Uh, this isn't for consumption of anyone, although I did just make a YouTube video about this. But that's more or less because I want to share the fact that I suck at this with you guys and I want to share that I'm on this journey to healing my relationship with movement and if you also have a tough relationship with movement and working out and feeling like a lot of movement and exercise feels like punishment and you're having a hard time finding something that brings you joy that doesn't make you like want to fucking go home and cry about after you're finished uh I get it that's what I'm doing and all we can do is just keep trying new things, be gentle with ourselves and not expect yourself to be good at anything. It's okay to suck. In fact, I encourage it. In more ways than one. Okay, end the video. <laughs> Sending you all of my love. I know it's not easy. Um, and I'm right there with you. So get out there, get your body moving and have a little recess. Just go move your body for the fun of moving and for no other reason than that. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.